Hello all. Uh, in this video, I will show how to use uh, Cast P Wave Server to predict uh, binding pocket, cavity, or channel uh, in a protein, and then uh, how to visualize the predicted pocket in using UCSF Chimera. So let's start. So Cast P is a uh, computed atlas of surface topography of proteins and uh, it's a very popular wave server for prediction of pocket or cavity so in order to um, perform cast p calculation you have to click on calculation and then you can upload the file here or uh, so here what i'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, one PDB that is one IAA. So this is actually crystal structure of human cell checkpoint kinase one. So I'm going to utilize this PDB. So let's download this PDB and then either. So this is the PDB structure and here is the probe radius. So this is for the detection of pocket or cavity and here um, this is my email address and I'm keeping this uh, probe radius value 1.4 ingstrom and it is default and just click on submit. So the result you can uh, assess uh, will be sent to Kumar my email id that is qmrviks1984 at the date of gmail.com or otherwise we can also uh, check the results uh, by clicking on this link so so we see that uh, job is still running and now it has it has not finished so cannot find Okay, the job has not finished. Yeah, you see. So basically, uh, I will check my email ID. So it takes time. So around then five or ten minutes you will get the results. So I will check my email ID. So still uh, job has not finished. So when uh, job will complete, then uh, I will receive an email from the Caspi. Yeah, so now the job has finished. So uh, result is ready. So it takes time. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that. Uh, This is not correct prediction. So there is only one pocket ID it is showing. So I will check uh, my email. Yeah. 
we should also check the spam folder yeah so it has uh, actually you see yeah So I can download this zip file. So it is showing only one pocket. So this is not correct because uh, mm, this is not correct. So let me check that zip file and just extract this file. yeah so uh, this uh, there are various files many files here and this dot poc file can be recognized by ucsf chimera so let me open uh, ucsf chimera The, uh, there should be several pockets but uh, I don't I don't know why it has just it is displaying only one pocket here yeah so here uh, from the file type here you can select this dot uh, poc cast p dot poc and then just uh, we have to go to the folder yeah. this. so this is 5f5e yeah so this is actually um, yes so in this you will see that there are several uh, pockets and uh, the largest one is uh, is number one so you see the largest one is when you will click on this then it will highlight that pocket Yeah, I think this is wrong because it should not be uh, like this. So I think the structure is not correct. Yeah, this structure is not correct. So that's that's why uh, the prediction is also not correct. I think it has some missing reasons. That's why. So uh, I will check other structure. Basically, I'm interested in uh, EPO structure. So let me uh, check this one I E eight one I A eight. So So I'm going to remove all this uh, all non-standard residues 
and save PDB as one I A eight. And then I'm going to use this for the pocket prediction. So again, I'm submitting this job. So I think there is something uh, wrong with this structure. So I just want to confirm it. Submit. Yeah. See, so now this uh, we can see here. This time the prediction is uh, again. This one is only one pocket. It is showing, but we will check. Uh, uh, we will download this file and we will check that. how many pockets are there okay so we see this pocket or file we have to open it So I hope this time pocket prediction is correct. So let's check. Yeah. So this time uh, it's correct. So I think uh, it might be because presence of water molecules or some um, uh, ions. So it's a better to download the structure, clean everything, and then uh, submit the protein for the pocket calculation. So I see. Uh, so this actually. Now, now you can see that number one pocket id has <clears throat> volume 797.4 angstrom cube and pocket ms area is uh, 517.7 angstrom there is only one opening and when you click on this then it will be highlighted so the surface will be highlighted and this is very a uh, good prediction because um, you see this this is a kinase serine threonine kinase and and uh, generally the kinases they have uh, they have this lobes uh, and between these two lobes uh, actually the ATP binding pocket uh, is situated so because I have worked with this protein so I know that this is ATP binding pocket and when uh, like uh, suppose if i download one structure that is 3pa3 that is with inhibitor so if we download this structure 3pa3 and try to overlap with so already like structure align 
I see that I have not aligned, but it's both structures are now aligned. And you can see that the, this inhibitor is fitting in this pocket. Another pocket is uh, you can go through all pockets. Another interesting pocket is this one, which is very closely uh, close to ATP binding pocket. And uh, when you will open one uh, structure that is with allosteric inhibitor, then you will realize that that uh, there is one allosteric inhibitor here yeah so you see now i have opened two crystal structures of chk1 with different inhibitors so one with uh, competitive inhibitor and you see that this competitive inhibitor occupies the atp binding site of the chk1 and this is an allosteric inhibitor and it utilizes the allosteric binding, binding pocket which is away from the ATP binding pocket. So cast P has uh, predicted uh, both pockets. Here you see that this is the very, uh, this is very small pocket and uh, you can say that it's a shallow one but it's still uh, open gene ring fits here. So generally um, uh, it's a hard to drug uh, actually those shallow pockets are not uh, like easily druggable so uh, generally the medicinal chemists they they find it they find uh, they face difficulties when they deal with the shallow binding pockets and they face problems when they design inhibitors but generally uh, deep pockets uh, like this uh, which which is ATP binding pocket is very easy to design uh, inhibitors so you will see that mostly the when we uh, when we uh, search allosteric inhibitors then we have very uh, few uh, allosteric inhibitors potent allosteric inhibitors known but when we uh, talk about competitive inhibitors then generally we have long list of competitive inhibitors so uh, there are so many uh, pockets uh, so cavities and you can go through all this and just you can discard all those small very small uh, like uh, not druggable pockets so yeah 12.6 angstrom it is not druggable because it's a very very small pocket so it's a very small pocket so you can't uh, it's it's not druggable so it's a cavity also so generally when you will visit this cast p server then you will realize that they have differentiated cavity uh, from the uh, pocket and cavity they have like uh, they have given different definition so you can just uh, check this one so pockets are empty con cavities on a protein surface into which solvent can gain access and they have mouth openings connecting their interior with the outside bulk solution while a cavity or void is, is an interior empty space that is not accessible to the solvent flow. So basically cavities are uh, situated inside the protein like in the interior side of the protein. So this is cavity not pocket because it doesn't have any opening you see. But these are pockets like it has openings. So you see this doesn't have any opening. So all this 0 0 0 it doesn't have any openings it means they are cavities and the good thing is like when you click on uh, like suppose I'm interested in this ATP binding pocket and when you will uh, after uh, after selecting this uh, pocket ID one when you will go to the sequence sequence then you will see that so this one is you will see that all those residues which belong to the pocket predicted pocket they have been highlighted in green background so you see that these are the residues so you can note down these residues and when you want to perform molecular docking or virtual screening then you can define the bind uh, the, you can just define the grid okay you can uh, define the binding pocket and you can just define uh, perform virtual screening <clears throat>
on this uh, against this pocket so caspi is very useful because i have already used it for one of my published article and uh, uh, there are several uh, uh, other servers which can you can uh, use for pocket prediction so uh, one is meta pocket okay but i think caspi is very friendly so you can use this so this cavity is actually they 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 uh, as you know this lock and key hypothesis that um, these cavities um, uh, according to the lock and key hypothesis uh, every ligand has uh, like uh, uh, fits into the complementary cavity so um, there 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 is a specific uh, key there there is a specific key for the specific lock so every protein has binding pocket and only uh, ligand showing sep complementarity with the respective pocket on that protein uh, uh, situated on that protein can only uh, bind but when we uh, uh, like the advanced modified uh, is version is induced fit hypothesis so according to the induced fit hypothesis when this ligand approaches to the uh, towards the protein and when it tries to occupy the binding site then it actually uh, the binding site can adjust itself to accommodate the ligand and it can uh, and also to optimize the interactions with the ligand so basically uh, the volume of this pocket is not constant so you know the protein is dynamic uh, protein uh, you know about the protein dynamics that every uh, atom of this protein uh, we, uh, is like uh, it can so displacement but like those covalently bonded they can they can they cannot move uh, much but those uh, atoms which are not covalently bonded uh, like side chain so when we consider this suppose uh, so this this uh, this this is a side chain and it's a glutamate so this this can actually uh, show some uh, movement because of dihedral angle so uh, so it, when it will move away then the volume of this pocket will increase so like this also so you see this uh, and also if you have like um, apoproteins generally uh, in case of apoproteins the pocket pocket generally the ligand binding pocket is not very well defined but when uh, when the ligand tries to bind then the pocket actually shows induced fit so so in this way you can also like uh, use it for different conform like when you have different conformation conformations of your protein then you can use those conformations different conformations to predict binding pocket and then you can see that how uh, how the pocket uh, like the vol how much is the volume of the pocket in different conformations and what is the uh, size and volume of the pocket in different conformations so I have here three structures of CHK1 and if I will predict uh, binding pockets in all three structures using all three structures then we will see that uh, the results will be not same yeah it will be sim uh, it will be not identical because uh, you you see that the uh, this orientation of side chains in different structures they are different like they are different so you see this So in this way, uh, you can uh, predict the pocket, you can uh, perform molecular docking or virtual screening against the predicted pocket. So this is very important for drug discovery or uh, like this uh, generally, these deep pockets are good for small molecules. But when we to uh, talk about the shallow um, uh, pockets, then they, they can uh, they can be uh, good for protein-protein interactions and yeah 
they can be good for small molecules also but generally uh, those shallow pockets they are uh, not druggable so another structure which i am going to explore is uh, is p53 mdm2 complex and let me so so p53 mdm2 pdb here actually uh, i have downloaded this structure the, the code is 4hfz and uh, here this this structure i have separated the p53 mdm2 and let me uh, so the p53 is the smaller part and mdm2 is the large large protein so i am treating mdm2 as receptor so uh, let me submit this so calculation fine submit So job has finished now so download the zip file and try to extract it yeah it's a c1 So this one. And we have to open this dot box. And now we have this with list of actually yeah, I have not removed this sulfate ion. So I see that there are different pockets here. Yeah. So let me open this P53 now. So we will see that where P53 is binding. So we see that this P53 is actually um, binding here. So the pocket one uh, is actually situated, uh, you, you know, this is uh, MDM2 and I have predicted pockets on MDM2. So um, you see that this benzene ring and tryptophan ring, they are actually uh, they are uh, yeah so these uh, two rings they are accommodating uh, this pocket and uh, this is very small pocket because p53 mdm2 interaction uh, you you see that this is like um, protein protein interaction and and you see that only two residues which are hydrophobic in nature uh, which are uh, actually these two residues are hydrophobic in nature they are very important for p53 mdm2 interaction and you will see that mini crystal structures uh, in which uh, 
we have inhibitors uh, which which disrupt the interaction of p53 mdm2 bind they bind here so they actually interferes with the interaction so when already inhibitor is bound here then these two rings will not accommodate so this interaction of the um, so these two uh, residues are very critical for p50 these two residues of p53 are critical for mdm2 p53 interactions so in this way uh, we can see uh, the pockets there is another one but this is cavity because it has zero mouth so if you see mouth there is no mouth then it is cavity so this is pocket so i see this this is only one pocket which can actually accommodate this so uh, yes you can uh, check all those residues on mdm2 and you can perform virtual screening against this pocket to find find novel inhibitors uh, which can disrupt the interaction between p53 and MD, mdm2 so in this way uh, you can also save this picture here uh, save image and then you can just save it you can uh, just check the residues also which are actually making the pockets so glycine is there uh, isolution methionine valine valine so total five residues you see here they are making the pocket so you see that pocket prediction is not tough and it's very easy so use cast p web server for pocket prediction and try to learn uh, about uh, binding pockets and just you can design inhibitors or discover inhibitors uh, so thank you very much for watching the uh, video and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel thank you very much